It began life back in Malaysia in 2012 as a business idea by two entrepreneurs and former Harvard classmates. Fast forward six years and Grab has raised billions of dollars in funding and moved its headquarters to Singapore. Most recently, though, the firm hit the headlines after revealing plans to buy Uber's Southeast Asian operations for an undisclosed sum. The deal, which sees Uber take a 27.5% stake in Grab and a seat on its board, is facing regulatory scrutiny in Singapore, Malaysia and the Philippines. If approved, though, the move would solidify Grab's ride-hailing domination in Southeast Asia and be another milestone on its journey into a fully-fledged tech company that operates in nearly 200 cities and offers much more than just car rides. Anthony, thank you for taking the time to so speak much. to CNBC. No, what you. a week for you. It's, it's a busy week. When you were starting off the business, thinking about Uber picking up its own game in Southeast Asia, did you ever think one day I'll be buying their business in my own backyard? Yeah, um, it was something <laughs> that you know, I dreamt about for sure. And I felt that, you know, why can't a Southeast Asian company come up and build a Ali, a Tencent uh, of Southeast Asia? And I've always said this, if you look at my past reviews to interviews, you would see the same. And now what we've proven is that Southeast Asian companies can and will continue to build these regional champions. And that's something that I aspire and I encourage all startup founders to think about, about how do you grow up and build that wonderful regional champion. And this growth doesn't always come easy and not necessarily cheaply either, really. Yeah. Uber's still getting a 27.5% stake in the business, yeah. what Uber called several billion dollars worth. How did you arrive at the valuation? There's always many ways. Uh, one was obviously, it was an indication of market share, and we were clearly in a market leadership position. Uh, number two was the other assets that they were thinking about, about us, we were thinking with them, and we said, okay, this was a reasonable, uh, where both sides felt this could be acceptable to both boards. Founders never like to give up too much of the company though. Yeah. Was it a struggle for you? Did you think, ooh, can we make it a bit less than 27.5? Of course, <laughs> of course, all of us were, you know, debating hard about it, but you know, in the end, you know, we weren't fixated on hey, you know, a bit here more, a bit there less. It was really focused on hey, how can we create a great company that builds great products that solves real problems for customers in Southeast Asia. Hi, I'm Tanya Bryant, and thank you for watching CNBC Conversation. If you want to watch another episode, just click on the videos. And don't forget to subscribe to CNBC Life for the very best in feature programming. Thank you so much for watching.